got the glue. We got the Megaman. We got our Soul Wars box here. So I'm gonna do a newer kind of series. Um, I'm just gonna be building models now that I know I can stream that. So uh, this is a little birthday present I got for myself. Um, and yeah, I never got around to building it. Um, this was right when their shop opened up online after the coronavirus. Um, so I did an unboxing on this, so you can go look at that on my YouTube channel, Koi Boy Games. Um, if you know nothing really pops up here, so we'll see. All right, here we go. Start looking into the box. Open in the box. How's the box open? What's the issue? Come on. You can do it. I believe in you. Well. How did I get this to open before? <laughs> this is hilarious. Me struggling opening a box of Warhammer minis. What the frick? How'd I do this? Did I did I have to rip it? No, no, I went it's through the sides. No? What's this? How's this slide out? Twenty minutes later me struggling with a box, right? You know, right, right? Okay. Alright. Such a pretty box, I don't want to ruin it if I don't have to. Oh! There we go, it has tabs. So, got our little pieces there. What else we got? We got, hmm. Did it come with instructions or am I, am I? Uh, let me go see if it came with instructions. Hold on. We got instructions. Look at that. Look at that. Alright. Okay. You know what? Let's just do it in the order it shows. So we're gonna start with the Lord Arcanum here and see what he's all about. So Yeah, this, this is like Gundam on a smaller scale. It's a lot more glue and stuff. Okay. So we're looking for the Lord Arcanum. Shouldn't be too hard to find in the box here. God, I haven't built Warhammer models in freaking forever. Alright. Here we go. Really should have put out my cutting tray before doing this. But, you know, that's how life is. <laughs> Might get my desk a little cut up, but, you know, 
There, we'll put some, some paper under it. Let me find my cutting board. And then the scratch notes. There we go. All right. So let's look at look at what we got going on here. So gonna want to start with E6. Let's find our E6 here. I think it's the big one, but I'm not quite sure. That's part 13. E6. Six, there we go. On runner E. So I uh like to cut these guys a bit. Uh, I don't know if you can see it really. But we're gonna angle it down so you can a bit more. Alright, so we're gonna start here. I like to use a, uh, a knife for it, but I understand a lot of people like to use clippers. I'm just weird. Um, don't be like me. Wow, my game is really off. Really, really off. Okay, coming in. Gonna surgically do it here at this point, really. Oh my gosh. Okay. I can angle it down more so you can see what my hands are actually doing. Okay. Once again, I highly recommend actually getting uh, nippers if you're new to the hobby. Like I said, I'm just weird. I like to physically cut everything out. That's how I did it with Gundam. Um, it's it's a process, but I, I feel it gives me more control over actually what I cut and how I cut it. Which I just really like and I really appreciate that. A lot of it too was back in the day I couldn't really afford nippers because nippers are expensive. Like anyone can get a hobby knife. Like even you know, Games Workshop. I feel they are a good company. Um, they have done a lot better than they've been doing in the past as far as um, you know, just I guess not reaming their customers. My whole other videos about that, but. Uh, their nippers and their exacto knives are really expensive. Um, this is just a plain kind of exacto knife kind of thing. I think it's an Excel actually, but you can get them anywhere. You know, um, I recommend going to a local hobby store just because it supports the community and stuff. But you can really get them anywhere. See, this is where nippers come in handy, but I'm a stubborn bastard, so. Okay. Alright. Going in for the talons next. Gonna need to be really careful on that part. But we're going in. Make sure I don't mark up the desk here. I'm going to thicken those like all the way. <laughs> so there's going to be no way it can cut through. Because these boys, I forget how sharp they really are, you know. Um, they're really sharp. 
another thing getting cut with them hurts like a bitch. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know that. Don't don't. In modeling, uh, that's a it's a thing you really got to get used to, um, especially when you're a beginner. You're gonna cut yourself so many times, and it's it's not that it hurts. It's like a small finger prick, you know, kind of like those ones that like the doctor and whatnot, but. Oh my god, does it bleed. Oh my gosh. And a lot of that can be um, just negated. If you're cutting like I am, never put your fingers under the thing. Uh, horrible idea. Uh, <laughs> I, I learned that, like I said, the hard way. So, um, you know, always, always just keep that in mind. You know, cut a little there, make a little incision. Will suture, if you will. Wow, I forget how much tougher plastic is on um or hammer models than like Gundam. They seem to cut like the runners. Anyhow, they don't like reinforce the plastic. Like it is. Like, because they know you're not going to use it, you know? You're just going to essentially, like, you might keep some of the parts from the runner, like the extras, but you ain't using that whole thing. Oh, gosh, no, you know? And, uh, there we go. There we go. Final part, and then we'll, we'll separate gonna get there. So me and the boys, I still need to put together. We have that round Nautica video, I promise that's coming to you. Just had a lot on my plate lately, so uh, yeah. Can probably pull them out at this point. Alright, here we go. Part one of Lord Arcanum. So, I'll bring it back up now so you can see. Um, what I traditionally like to do at this point is cut out the nubs. So, I guess that's a nub right there. Uh, you probably can't see it, but like right there, a little piece that's like sticking up, that's a nub, and we're gonna, we're gonna cut that boy. I really love the Stormcast Eternals lore and everything too. Um, I just think it's it's really neat. And yeah, just the whole factor that like they're heroes, but every time they lose a bit of themselves, kind of, I just think it's really it's really interesting, just how they're almost corrupted by the order instead of like protected by it it's it's a fascinating concept um i've been reading the uh the first book in the uh the soul wars i guess you could call it and it's it's pretty interesting i didn't get too far in but it really gives you especially nagash i think is a really cool character which is the leader of um basically the undead dudes uh but Ooh, he's a, he's a tough motherfucker. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Crazy, I tell you, you know. Just just a lot. A lot going on, you know. A lot going on. Um whew. Come on. There we go. Get you, you little nubby. Nubby num nub. Okay. Alright. Oh, did I get all nubs? There's one on the arm there. It's important one you don't want to miss. 
See, I remember when I first started out, I didn't even, uh, I didn't even mess with nubs, and that was such a mistake. Like, I'd have these, oh my god, some, uh, like, my first models, like, if you guys have ever seen that, um, for those of you who are a little more experienced in Warhammer, you, you know, I'm not, I'm not experienced, but you know the meme where it's, like, thin your paints, um, yeah, those were, like, professional grade models in comparison to mine like oh my god and if you don't know what that is um it's basically a video you can look it up um it's just these people who pretty much dipped a <laughs> i never dipped um but they they took the little can of paint and they just dipped their model in there they were like Shh, and then they splattered like random stuff and the eyes are like this big on it and it's oh my gosh it's terrible it's uh because you really gotta thin your paints that's the thing um all right so i think this this piece right here is pretty clean uh free of blemishes let's let's move on to the next part mm. oh it's got japanese too i like that go okay so we're gonna go with um it looks like E1 next. Uh, we'll go with that. So E1, part number one, part E. It's two, part one. Where are you? Is that part seven? No, well, I found part seven. I need. Oh, it's multiple. Okay, I see. So we got E6. Let's go with E7 because we know where that's at, and that's going to be a little piece that's going to be annoying as all hell to deal with later. So we're going to go in for E7 here. Real easy. All right. See, this is where you need to be careful because you can cut yourself real easy. And believe me, it, it bleeds like a like a bitch. It hurts. All right. Cut in there. Okay. Maybe a little more. I'm gonna have so much plastic on my floor, it's not even gonna be funny. Alright, so we're gonna attach that where? The tail end, the back of the tail end, more specifically, on the front end. Okay, I see. So, what I like to do is, I know it's not, um, it's not really the correct way to say because these can be built just by popping in they're easy to build models they call them um but i'm going to take just a little little smidgen of glue i'm just gonna pop that boy right in there We're just gonna hold it there till it dries. So it's kind of the annoying part about Warhammer models is they take they take a pretty extensive time to dry and you know get themselves settled and yeah. And the glue smells really weird. It like it's like that. Like all airplane glue smells weird. Do not do not sniff it. Uh, it will get you high. I don't know from experience, but just don't do it it's not smart um but anyhow i think that's starting to phase in just a wee bit um tilt that a bit oh i see okay oh uh, there we go let me 
maybe a bit more right there. Kind of cover it a bit. All right. Let that dry. The nice thing about the plastic glue too. Um, I really like how they improved it. They added a lot more of a, you know, before it was just this big thing, and now it's got like this little, little like needle almost. Nice thing about the plastic glue is um, it actually molds into the plastic, making it one piece. Bad part, you can't separate it later on if you ever want to change the model without, you know, cutting it and slicing it. But, you know, we make do. E11, next part. Looking for it. E11 right there. It's gonna be that part. And bring it down so you can see once again what I'm doing. Gonna cut that right there. Ooh wee. Just making sure it doesn't cut through the paper. It's doing a good job. I need to find my model, you know, cutting thing. Okay. That's real technical terms. Okay. Scratch off. Well, a bit too far on the cutting there, but you know, sometimes, sometimes these things are tricky. That's kind of the fun of it, though. You know, if it just went together, like a lot of people are like, my main complaint about people sometimes is they really think that they're like, oh, well, why don't you just buy them, you know, pre-made or like, I have to build it. What's the fun in that game? It's a hobby. It's an all-inclusive hobby. And I think that's what makes it unique because I'm going to be honest, like, I don't think if Warhammer was just sold in a box game, it would do too great. Like, if we're being honest with ourselves. So, well, it is sold in the box game. But if it wasn't, you know, a build-your-own thing and, then, like, you could just go to Target and buy it like Magic the Gathering, I don't think, or like some card game or other board game, I don't think it would sell too well, to be honest. Um, but I think the beauty lies in the building, the painting, and the artistry that actually makes it the hobby as well. I mean, the game, game's great, but I think what really attracts people is the hands-on experience that you you don't get you know with many other games um and especially there's not as large of a community for other games that are like this so i really i really think that's neat um but you know that's just me that's just my opinion that's going in well i i got that one all right, on to the next part. What's the next part? Let's look at our graph. Uh, we got we got E7 down. We're looking at the top, which is going to be E10 and E9 we're connecting. So we're going to move that away. E9. There's E10, we can cut that out right away, you know. E10. Right here. So you know, like these, they're really easy to cut out, but they're really hard to, you know, thin the nubs when you really get down to it. Um, like right there, there's a nub. I could just screw up the hair so bad right here. Um, or f yeah, it's hair. It's not feathers. So another thing. Like, so, I don't know if I've ever showed off my original armies. Or, like, not my armies, but I want to make... My goal for the Stormcast Eternals is 
since they're already kind of in this ambiguous phase, I want a storyline with mine. Because I think every army deserves a storyline. So it's going to be essentially about a... Okay, so the primary army is going to be... I painted them a dark kind of bronze. Because I want them to be essentially tainted. I want um, the army to be touched by chaos in some way. I haven't really decided what god. Um, we're moving on to E9. Um, I, I'm thinking corn right now. Um, or each one's going to have like a little bit of a fusion of each. But I want an army that essentially, you know, kind of believes in the ideal of so the stormcast eternals for those of you who don't know every time they're reforged so pretty much that means they're brought back up after they basically die at the second they're about to you know lose their last breath um sigmar steps in he's like yo no i have to reforge you again so he basically pulls their soul up to um i think it's azir is how it's pronounced and he, he takes them, right? And he reforms them. And he pumps them with his um, his divinity, his lightning. Um, and he changes their body. And they're already heroes, so they're pretty, pretty strong to begin with. But he does this. And every time he redoes this, they get more powerful. But that power comes at a price. What happens then is... Um, so they essentially start to feel less they start to be themselves less and it slowly consumes them so i want an army that made a pact with one of the four demon gods in uh warhammer and their pact was basically like yo we're still we're still gonna follow sigmar but we're gonna give a little bit to you and the trade-off is we're going to essentially embody whatever your chaos is and at the end that will be our final emotion so like if they're corn they're driven by bloodlust and anger if they're zinch they're gi driven by change and knowledge and that that kind of search if they're um slanesh they're obviously driven by a vice um whether that be alcohol sex you know yada yada all that good sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Um, and then if they're Zinch, or wait, no, I went over Zinch. It's so Nurgle. Um, they have their like sun mentality, and their um, I don't know how to describe Nurgle, but just look into his philosophy, and you'll kind of get what I mean by that uh, sun mentality. Um, but other than that, yeah, I just want them to like have that as their trade-off like we'll be corrupted but we'll still have an aspect of ourselves we won't become mindless drones to sigmar we'll still serve him but in the end of the day it's not going to be our drive of him that takes over it's going to be whatever emotion we had that was human even if it's a bad one so that's kind of where i want my storyline to go for them um, but you never know. You never know. You really don't. Okay, what's next? So E8. E8. Let's go to E8. <sighs> There's E8. So this is a body piece, it looks like. I'm going to cut into. Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, I did do kind of a review on it, so it should be all right. Um, but essentially, the, uh, the Soul Wars box comes with um, two armies, uh, and it's a pretty decent starter compared to other warhammer products in the past uh that are starters a little more pricey but that price is worth it um i would say and 
essentially it comes with the Stormcast Eternals, which are these guys, Sigmar's ultimate weapon, his basically holy unholy creation, and the legions of Nagesh. And Nagesh is a pretty cool guy. Kind of an asshole though, but he's he's a Chad, you know, it's it's two Chads. If you want like a box about a Chad versus a slightly more emo Chad, um this this is the box for you. This is this is the Chad box, you know, you got got a lot of Chads, you know. If you want the Chad versus the Doomer, this is the box for you. Um I'll just say that. But no, in all seriousness, cool models, really cool stuff. Um, I'm going to cut the video part of it here. I'm still going to continue streaming, but I'll um, see you guys on the YouTube side later.